good. What's up, bro? How are you? Good. 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 Thank you. So I feel like it's like Aljomania here at the gym so far today. Do you yeah. feel the love from the fans? I definitely feel the love, man. That Long Island energy, that Long Island crowd. This was uh, very much exceeding my expectations on how much people were going to actually come out to this. So I think it just kind of gives you that vibe. And I think we did a better job of promoting it a little bit earlier. And uh, this is a huge fight, man. Huge fight for Long Island. A lot of eyeballs. I think people want to see what they're in store for. It's going to be a, a good fist fight, man. So definitely thank all the Long Island people for coming out to support. Some people from Connecticut, Penn State. Really cool, man, to see the uh, the support for people driving all the way out here just to be a part of this moment. And uh, I can't wait for August 19th. Oh, yeah, it's gotten bigger. Your open workouts have gotten bigger with each one I've seen. Yeah. This one's definitely topped them. So now O'Malley's the opponent. How do you beat Sean O'Malley at UFC 292? I think beating O'Malley, put the pressure on him, do what I do best, cut him off, um, get him down early. You know, the difference with the Henry Cejudo fight, he was able to keep the fight standing long enough where when I did get the takedown, I didn't have a lot of time to work. I think this might be a little different. I get the takedown early, and I think I'm going to have plenty of time to work, and that's going to be the difference in this fight. So I look forward to going out there, establishing my dominance in round one, round two, having him doubt himself, take him down again, and end the fight. So I asked you about people saying that you were forced into this. They took care of you money-wise, or did they make you promise? Like with the 145 title, or what'd they do for you? Uh, a couple of things behind the scenes, man. I, you know, I'm learning the game a little bit better in terms of uh, not revealing too much. Sometimes I, I talk a little too much more than I should, and it always comes back to bite me in the ass. And I even told them that. I was like, sometimes I just be too honest. And then when I'm too honest, it backfires on me. So when keeping it real goes wrong, sometimes. When keeping it real it. goes wrong. So I'm trying to tone it down a little bit, just give just enough. But I'm happy, good things to come, and uh, let's just say it's going to be million dollar funk. So, so after 292, 145, right? That's the plan. How 45. long do you think it takes you to get up there? I know you said you want to take a little bit of time. I, to get to 145 is going to be overnight. That's, that ain't hard to do. Well, not just, John Jones. You're not taking three years off, right? Nah, You're going to have six no, months, a year? I think at least six months, lift, fill out a little bit, get comfortable sparring with bigger guys, um, get used to moving that body weight around and then being able to cut the weight and trying to put back as much weight as I can so I'm not too small while I'm in there with these guys. So without putting you in a predicament, you know, I know you're around both guys, but do you think you're going to be fighting Taporia or fighting Volkanovski for the belt at 145? I don't know. Taporia is freaking good. So if he gets the crack at him first, we'll see how he does. Personally, I would rather fight Volkanovski because that's the bigger name in the sense of everything he's accomplished. And to beat a guy like that and to beat a guy too deep on him, that's huge, man. That's that's his legacy status right there. Yeah, that's your the goat. Yes, sir. That's you're up there. So now, Weidman's coming back on this card as well. One, the team captain, right, of Longo Weidman. You're, we're in law MMA right now. Have you talked to him? How do you feel about him coming back? I feel good about him, Chris coming back. But I told Chris, look at me in the eyes. I'm the captain now. <laughs> oh, okay, that's what that was. Uh, <laughs> so now is that nerve wracking though? With like you know you. A guy you look up to, why? I mean, he's going to be on your undercard. No, not at all. You know, we fought on the same week before, I think twice. First time we're fighting on the same card, and I just think it's going to be good energy, good vibes all the way around. You know, I want to see him succeed. He wants to see me succeed, and I think that's really what it's all about. Feeding off of each other, he's going to set the tone for the night, the same way Favola did, and uh, go out there and do my thing. Speaking of Favola, I know you're a fight fan. Who do you want to see Favola fight next? Oh, Patty the Batty. Oh, Patty the Batty. All right, we're rattling him off now. So Fumi Nakuda, is he ready for the UFC right now? I think Fumi's more than ready for the UFC. Get that man in there. Sign this guy. I think he's easily top 15. Give him a little bit more time to develop. I think he's going to start putting these guys away even sooner. Um, guy's really fast, really hard to hit. And uh, 
he's just fun to watch. He's been one of your secret weapons. I remember before the Cejudo fight, I was like, oh, he's seen it before with Pumi. He's had the speed, that size, everything. Yeah, Pumi's um, I think he's a dark horse, man. You know, he's had a long layoff, but I think the way he came back, super dominant. I think he might have got touched once. So looking forward to him and his title run in the UFC, and I can't wait for him to get signed. So the GOAT, John Jones, is going to probably end his career in New York for a steep day. How do you think that fight goes? I don't know. I haven't really had the time to break it down. I know, obviously, if the fight hits the floor, it's John Jones's game. If it stays into the boxing, Steve Bay's a better boxer, but John's got the range, he's got the reach, those oblique kicks, side kicks, and that's what makes it interesting. He's more of a kickboxer where he uses a lot of devastating elbows and knees. And Steve Bay's more of a uh, boxer, so we'll see uh, how the fight goes. I know you're out in Vegas now. You're training with in the same gym as Francis Ngannou. He, he got the big fight. He got the Tyson Fury fight. You see him boxing. Is his boxing good enough to beat Tyson Fury, you think? I think time will tell, man. He's working. And that's what it's all about. If there's anybody who has a nuclear missile in his hands, it's Francis Ngannou. And so, then last one for me, if you can, just what are your thoughts on, I know you're, you've become pretty good friends with Jamal Hill, right? Yeah. What are your thoughts on his little back and forth with Ariel? And do you feel like MMA media needs to be a little bit more respectful with how they talk to fighters? Uh, Definitely, MMA media should be more respectful with the way they talk to fighters because that ass can get clapped. <laughs> well, that's what he said. Me and Ariel, like, we'll be in the same room someday. So. Yeah. So it's one thing to talk the way you talk on camera. It's another thing to talk behind the camera when no one's around. So I, I, I haven't really followed the whole thing. It's a lot of drama. I don't know who's wrong in this situation, but I do know if you talk tough and people talk tough back to you, you kind of got to answer for those words. So that's all I'm going to say. Oh, for sure. Thank you, Aldro. And still, brother. And still. Let's go.